Heinz, I'm so happy to be here with you. The Society of Cybernetics made me the gift of being able to come so that we can talk a little bit on some uh, very central questions of the moment, particularly this matter of what is happening with the fear that scientists have about cybernetics or systemic thinking. Yeah. Mm. Umberto, I can't tell you how I enjoy it. I enjoy your presence here. I missed you for years lately, and I'm so glad that the cyberneticians finally find out that we are originally cyberneticians, that we have to get together. Exactly, yes. Yeah, but your point is very interesting. This is a point which we, I think, years and years ago already reflected upon it. This is when scientists or science begins to reflect about its own activity. Mm. Usually scientists talk about their specialty, the oculist talks about eyes, the pedalist about legs, the uh, ornithologist about birds, etc., etc. But rarely they talk about what are we doing at all. And perhaps you remember when you were visiting us uh, 30 years ago at the biological computer, late in the 60s, there was a first wave of scientists suddenly addressing the problem of science. Oh yes, I remember very well. Articles appeared in science where scientists wrote about science. Nature was full of articles. Every year had about five or ten articles. And I suspect the cause for this sudden rise of science, scientists writing about science was the Vietnam War. The question was, should we use our intelligence, use our weaponry, our science to use it for destructive purposes? And for several voices came about and said, just watch, ladies and gentlemen, what we are doing. But then the whole thing subsided with the uh, uh, stop of the, of the, uh, of the, the war, war the, uh, the silent war, the in underground war. But now, suddenly an interest arose in scientists to think about what are we doing? Because in the last two or three years, books, articles, papers appeared which suddenly question the notion of scientific activity. And uh, for instance, there's a book uh, which is on its back cover. It says, the world in which we are living is not external, is not independent from us. It is we who construct and reconstruct and rebuild and recreate a world in which we then live. Well, another book has a title, Truth is the Invention of a Liar. Can you imagine how <laughs> unpleasant that is yeah. for a scientist who is working his whole life for truth? Mm. And uh, my suspicion is, in the moment when you begin doubting the existence of an external world, the problem of truth in the sense of veritas, where an utterance has to be confirmed by looking at what's going on outside. That means if somebody says, Sky is blue. Should I trust him? Is it really blue? Look out, aha, uh -huh. I look out, the world says the sky is blue. Aha, uh -huh. now I have established the truth of his statement. If the sky is blue is taken away by a doubter, by somebody that I'm not too sure that we can establish whether the sky is blue or not, then the whole problematic of the science is popping up. And my feeling is this is some of the causes why scientists begin to prick their ears and say, what are these bunch of people doing? Yeah. Yes, uh, I think th though that uh, many scientists, precisely because what you say, that did not reflect on what they do, uh, do not realize what is the source of that doubt yeah. about the blueness of the sky. Yeah. Now, in, in, in present exactly. history, because yeah. the, the, these uh, skeptics have existed for quite a long time. Of course, yeah, yeah. 2,000 years or yeah, so, at least. least. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and they do not see that if uh, you apply the very notions that we scientists use to yeah. the attempt to understand how we function so that yeah. we can know this external reality, we cannot show how we do it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think there are even other streaming. For instance, the problem of language. Uh, I just mentioned a couple of mm. clubs who appeared in the last couple of years who are the culprits, as most of the science say, about this shaking 
of the foundation of science, the ones I call the postmodernist mm. or the deconstructivist, for instance, who ask, is a interpretation of a sentence unique? Or are there mm. are several interpretations. In the moment when you doubt that interpretation of a sentence is unique, then what does a sentence mean? What's going on? Or for instance, statements like the hearer and not the speaker determine the meaning of an utterance. Things of that sort put a shock through the scientific world because they what? I'm determined what he says? I think he's supposed to determine what he says. Yeah. He's, of course, responsible for what he says, but the interpreter is interpret responsible for his interpretation. Things of that sort are basic problems that are not only appearing in science, they're appearing in practically all wakes of our life. Yes, yes. I myself and we, are, we together, yeah. in some other moments, as you say, 30 years ago at least, uh, when we began our reflections about the observer yeah. and the understanding of the observer as a living system, then we enter into this matter of perception, but we never question the validity of science as a manner of explaining. Uh, and this, I think, is the problem. You and I and cyberneticians, we are not questioning science as a manner of explaining. We are questioning, we are asking, how is it that we do what we do, for example, explaining? Yeah. And this is a different thing. So I think much of this criticism about science is not valid. You know, this is not the, the critics of the science who are uh, considering the scientists themselves consider being criticized. That yeah. is, I think, the amusing thing. Yeah. yeah, but they consider to be criticized because they think that science rests on this possibility of reference to an external reality and do not realize that what we scientists do is indeed explaining our experience with our experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, that's a very important point. In general, scientists stick to the notion there is an external reality independent from ourselves. Yeah. One has to make that postulate to begin to make science at all. And you, as I see, and I myself, consider this an absolutely unnecessary uh, prerequisite. Exactly. Completely unnecessary. But I tell you why for many scientists this is necessary. Exactly what I said before. In order to establish the truth or the validity of a statement, you must say, if I say the sky is blue, then there must be a method to find out whether the sky is really blue. And therefore, there has to be a sky who happens to be blue. Now, but could one then speak about a criterion of validity of such a statement which does not require the, this externality so, yeah. to validate it? I think so. And uh, I was thinking a little bit into this, the linguistic problem of truth and, as in German, Wahrheit. Wahrheit, which is, of course, translated directly into truth, is derived from veritas, from the Latin veritas, which always requires a check or allow a check. If I say the sky is blue, the veridity of that statement is being found out to check whether the sky is really blue. Yeah. The English expression of truth derives from trust. That means in trust, I don't have to verify. Because if I trust the other one who says, by the way, the sky is blue, I don't have to look, I trust him. You say, now I know the sky is blue because I trust this other guy. So the notion of trust and the notion of veritas are so fundamentally different in the relation of people to people, which I think it is absolutely worthwhile to point to this fundamental difference. Yeah. If I have to verify, then I always what I say is doubtful. But if I have trust in the others, then it is not doubtful. I do not doubt what he says. Yeah, but if you have to verify, yeah. then the procedure of going out and looking, do you see blue? Yes, yeah. I see blue. Then it, this is a verification. Yeah, exactly. Which doesn't say something about there, but about what happens to these people. Yeah. And so this is the source of trust yeah. at the same time. Uh, correct, yeah. That means you trust him because he did his verification by looking out of the sky and said it's blue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, this is this is not 
and as we do it, yeah. we do not really require that it is, quote, really, in, in yeah. a sense that is in its externality, yeah. blue, but it is blue in the sense of the procedure that we have to verify. Yeah, correct. But this twist yeah, mm. is not generally understood, you see, because when you really talk about verification, you always look at the something external which has to be tested. And not the testing procedure itself is being proposed as one way of recognizing whether the sky is blue. But it's what we scientists do is to, is to use the procedure. Correct, but they are not aware of that. You That's see, it. the feeling is that the procedure is establishing the truth. Yeah. So it is this lack of reflection of scientists yeah. about what they do, what creates yeah. indeed this difficulty, yeah. rather than what they do. Exactly, but this is, is a very broad feeling. And for instance, fascinating thing, one of the critis, critics of this tendency of pointing uh, to the procedure, not to the external, externality. Pointed out that there is a new movement, which is something associated with leftish activity, as of this a communist plot nowadays, yeah. to point out that trust is a deeper relation than truth. Well, but it's a different relation. No, yeah, of course. No, yeah. Of course, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's the point, yeah. So trust has to do with what we can do together without doubting yeah, exactly. the cooperation as a possibility yeah. and as an actuality. Exactly, yeah. While verification has to do with what operations shall we accept to accept the statement as being valid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So this is an interesting thing. And how do you think that this could be solved? What should be done? I, I must confess, I don't know. I yeah. really don't know. Uh, there are several very interesting books out, and I mentioned the one which uh, is in German, uh, is a canon, a canon, this uh, understanding, understanding, something like that, mm. by one of my friends, Umberto Maturana. Oh. Yeah. Ah. I enjoyed it very much. <laughs> Fantastic. I enjoyed it Fantastic. very much. And then many are Ernst von Glasersfeld, for mm. instance. Mm. Uh, Ernst, who is one of the most remarkable students of the history mm, yes. of the development of these thoughts yeah. and points in the most elegant way to long before pre-Socratic thinkers yeah. already pointed out the skeptical notion as you pointed out this how can I know what you say that you say etc yeah. etc et at this point I think could rise slowly it becoming more and more understood I have the feeling for instance that young people are jumping on that notion much more readily than already established, well-established people who are middle, in the middle of the field, they have their Nobel Prizes, they are great professors, etc., etc. Yeah. So this intersects, in fact, with, uh, with philosophy. Yeah. Uh, because it is philosophers which are in search of the truth. Yeah. But scientists are in search of an explanation in the operationality of living. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So you think we have to stop the philosophers <laughs> and encourage the scientists? <laughs> well, we should uh, help the scientists to recover self-trust. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because if you look at the, at the matter of science and, the, and in fact how scientists operate, it is not truth, but it is coherences in the doing and in the explanations, yeah. in the process of explaining. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, this matter of truth is the question of philosophers. The, yeah. the skeptics are skeptics in terms of philosophy, philosophical question about precisely truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do we scientists search for truth, in fact? Yeah, at least this is what they believe they do. Because if I read all the responses of the so-called uh, de uh, deconstructivist, um, uh, postmodernist, rel relativist, they are accused to be political enemies. Yeah. Yeah? Like, Communists, for heaven's sake, they begin to undermine our Western rationalistic tradition, WRT in short. Yeah? Yeah. So by doubting that truth can be found, because if there is no uh, external reality, how can you establish a, uh, green, a tree is green or the sky is blue? But for example, two times two equals four is true? 
Yeah, but this is not true in that sense. It's, it's valid. I think this is a different baby. This baby is that the rules of the games are set so that you arrive at that point. We can only then change the rules of the game. But if you establish the rules of the game, then these things are falling into place. It's like when you play chess and you move with the, uh, with the queen uh, uh, or with the king as, as if it were a queen. They say, no, 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 my boy, you are not allowed to do that. The rules of the game say the king has to move like that. Yes. So if you do the two times two thing and you say five, you see, of course, it's a very funny thing. It's like the queen, the king moving like a queen. Yeah. No, we have, to, when you play mathematics, and we say we are accepting now the cards as they are staked, yeah. the way in which we do the rules, then we come nolens volens to four. Yeah, but uh, when you do a scientific research, for example, yeah. you have also a procedure which specifies exactly what you have to do. And if you do not do this properly, then you are out. But it is the satisfaction of this procedure in actual experience operation yeah. that will yeah. allow you to say, this is a scientific case. Yeah, but I think what the scientists think they do, establishing the rules of the game, you see. Uh, since we do not know yet the rules of nature, let's find about why do two bodies attract each other. Then Uncle Newton comes along and says, this is of gravitation. The attraction of the two bodies will be in square, in, in, uh, inverse of the square of the distance. Yeah. Okay, then they establish the rule of chess. Mm -hmm. And this is an observed thing that this is so and so and so. That means we can find the rules of the game. They are not so as in chess or the mathematics. We say, let's invent a game. Yeah, but it's fine. If we find the rules of the game, yeah. that means that as long as we operate according to the rules of the game, which we find in what we do, yeah. by observing the planet's movement or by dropping things, yeah. then that is what establishes the validity of what we say, not its correspondence with an external reality, because eventually we may find that the rules of the game that we were using were slightly different that for yeah. a while they work, but yeah. in fact, if you push them to their completeness, you have to change them. I think we are talking about two different rules. I had in mind, you see, when I compared the chess or the mathematics with the rules or the laws of nature, with what nature is doing, what you are talking about, the rules of the procedures, of finding the rules of the nature. Yeah. So there are two levels of rules. The finding of the laws of nature is a game which is completely understood, perfectly all right. But the notion is that, that out there in nature, that intrinsic rules which keep the universe together, if I find them, I know how the world is working. And what the tendency is today of these people eyes is you cannot find the rules of the universe. You can find a dialogue where we talk about the rules of the universe as if there were the rules of the universe. And in most of the cases, they fit. But the procedure to do that is exactly as you say, is I think well understood, it is not doubted at all. Okay, now, and why we cannot find the rules of nature than itself? Yeah. What, is, what in, interferes without, with our finding the yeah. rules of nature in themselves? I think that what interferes is the, is the nature of the operation of finding the rules of nature. Oh, I see. You mean this is the limitation of yeah. the finding of the rules, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So it, it doesn't matter that we cannot find them in themselves because we yeah. are always operating according to the coherences of our operation. Uh -huh. and yeah. that's why we can oh, that's a very interesting notion. You say it's a consequence of the rules which give ourselves to find the rules of the universe, the rules of the universe will appear in the way in which they then appear. Yes. You mean the searching procedure has the finding already included? Yes. That's in a, a way, lovely idea. Yeah. I, I like that very much. And yeah. in addition, if we apply those rules of nature that we have found in that way, yeah. we find that we cannot find them as if they were independent of us externally. Yeah, okay. yeah, but then, you see, if that idea is spread, that would be a very end, because then we can really <laughs> talk about a variety of universes, as you call them, the multiverse. 
Yeah, but each I mean, one of them is, is valid in, in itself. Yeah, yeah, but uh, how do you spread that notion now? What Would you write a paper and submit it to science? Please, <laughs> I will leave you it. And yeah, they, they perhaps will not accept it. No, 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 but look, of course they will not accept it, but then submit it to something else. Yeah. No, but uh, I tell you another funny story. The whole uh, shaking the foundation of science is, of course, undermined or was undermined by several other occasions. There was a gentleman by the name of Sokal. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sokal wrote a fascinating article uh, entitled, I think, The Quantum Gravity of Hermeneutics or something yeah. similar. And he submitted to a postmodern journal uh, called, I think, Text. It was reviewed by several professors of the uh, what is it, deconstructivist school, the postmodernist the linguistic, linguistic school, was accepted and was published. When it was published, Mr. Soker said, ladies and gentlemen, this is a hoax. I invented lots of ideas and notions, absolutely nothing to do with any scientific activity. Mm. It's a pure invention of mind. And somebody would understand the terminology which I'm using. You would have immediately roared with laughter what kind of a, a thing that is what this guy is talking about, quantum uh, gravity and hermeneutics, uh, two entirely different things. So everybody said, aha, you can cheat yourself into science in such a way that these people themselves don't know what they are doing. Well, but what the cheating was, was in the listening of the editors. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah it was not into science. It was the cheating in the listening of the editors. Yeah, but they fell into the whole thing and they produced this article, yeah. Yeah, because... Oh, they reviewed it even. Yeah, or the reviewers, because the, the reviewers had not reflected yeah. what they do. Absolutely. So they accepted the form. Exactly, they accepted the form. Yeah, Only yeah. that. Yeah. Well, well but this is... Uh... But I think there are several of those things which are taking place now, which of course makes everybody starting doubting what's going on. Is, do they pull my leg? Are they making a joke of me? Is there a real insight? Is this a new truth? Et cetera, et cetera. Well, maybe then what the attention should shift from, the, from science as a manner of explaining to yeah. the scientists, which are the users of science, which do not reflect on what they do. Yeah, 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 exactly. And maybe if the scientists, would re because science, science cannot reflect on what science is, because yeah. science is, a, is the domain of uh, yeah, statements but, uh, or explanations, uh, but, but, but scientists but can. Yeah. But can. scientists okay. can. We yeah. scientists can reflect. We have to write the article. Okay. <laughs> maybe, we, maybe we still maybe can write the, yeah. the article. Maybe we should really do. Yeah. I think the point, the point I find particularly interesting, that the procedures by which we try to find the rules of the natural game, that means the laws of nature, are in one way already predetermined by the rules which have given ourselves in order to find them. Yep. Which I think is a very interesting point, because that would reflect particular cultural approaches to the problem, what is the, what is the world, what is the universe? Yeah. But the choice of the ways to find out what is it. Yes. Uh, do I, uh, do I yes, recapitulate yes, yes, your yes, point? Yes, 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 this is fine. Heinz, maybe we can stop here now. I think now. we could, yes. And we, do you think and we can meet tomorrow again? That would be lovely. That would be lovely. And you're thinking about another problem, exactly. you toss it to me. I will. Okay, wonderful oh, teacher. Fantastic, Heinz. Thank fantastic. you. Thank you. It was great. <laughs>